solving examples. These pictures you see right here are just real life examples. So we have a Ferris wheel. We have a bucket of water being spun vertically above someone's head and the water stays in the bucket. And then we have a another roller coaster, the Ring of Fire, where people are going constantly in a circle. Okay, let's go ahead and do a problem. So we have a 12 gram stopper spinning in a circle 10 times for a total time of 7.5 seconds. And it's attached to a string that's 68 centimeters long. We have a series of parts. Let's start with A and B. Okay. So let's first draw a little scenario. What is going on here? So we have the stopper. Oops. Let's go back a page. We have the stopper connected to a string. It's being spun horizontally above someone's head. Somehow the string is held in place. Here's a person holding it. You're going to do this in a lab very soon. So the stopper has a mass of 12 grams which is 0 0.012 kilograms and it has a radius of 68 centimeters so if it's 68 centimeters that's equivalent to 0 0.68 meters and it, ta it goes around in this circle 10 times and it takes 7.5 seconds so for part A we're looking for how long does it take for the stopper to go around in one revolution. So if it takes, for 10 revolutions, it takes 7.5 seconds. Well, let's set up a pro proportion. For one revolution, how long would it take? So if we cross multiply, we end up getting 10x equals 1 times 7.5 is 7.5. Divide by 10 on both sides. We get 0 0.75 seconds per revolution. This is also known as our period. And period, eventually you'll get to this, this is the variable for period is capital T. For part B, what is the average speed of the stopper? So for average speed, we're looking for the velocity. Well, we want to know what is the velocity of this object? We know that the velocity travels a certain distance one time around in a given time period. So we could use our linear equation, velocity equals distance over time. And our distance traveled is equivalent to the distance around the circle one time. So we know that that's equivalent to the circumference, so 2 pi r. 2 pi times the radius is 0 0.68. divided by our time. Our time for one revolution was 0 0.75 seconds. We're in meters per second, which is good because that's what we're looking for. When you go ahead and solve, you should get 5.7 meters per second. Okay, let's go on to part C and D. So for part C, what is the centripetal acceleration of the stopper? Well, now we're looking for Let's make sure we're in the right color. Black. Okay. Now we're looking for centripetal acceleration. Gosh. Sorry, I have to keep changing it between the pen and the arrow. Okay. So centripetal acceleration is AC. That's what's in question. Well, we just found out a new equation for that. So acceleration centripetal is equal to velocity squared over the radius. We just found velocity in part B. So the velocity was 5.7 meters per second. And we're squaring that 
divided by our radius. Our radius is 0 0.68 meters. When you go ahead and calculate that, you should get 47.8 meters per second squared. Okay, for part D, we're looking for the tension in the string. So we're saying that the only, f the, the one force, let's draw a picture one more time. The one force that's keeping this object moving in a circle, I know that doesn't look like a circle, it's supposed to be a circle, is a centripetal force force centripetal. But we're not going to ever denote it with FC. We're actually just going to call it its true force. And in this case, tension is the true force for the centripetal force, keeping it going in a circle. So we don't want to put FC on a free body diagram. We would label it as tension. In real life, this if we were to actually do this lab or this uh, example or scenario, this stopper would actually sag a little bit. It wouldn't be in a perfect horizontal circle. So it would actually have an additional component of force of gravity pulling it down, slightly down. But we're going to ignore gravity. So this is a perfect scenario. So the sum of the forces that is keeping it in a circle is equal to mass times acceleration. Well that force is the centripetal force, so tension is what's accelerating it. And our acceleration is the centripetal acceleration. So let's go ahead and solve for solve for our tension. Well, we know that the mass was 0 0.012 kilograms, and our acceleration was 47.8 meters per second. When we multiply these together, we get 0 0.574 newtons. Okay, let's do one more. So now we have a 12 kilo, 1200 kilogram car traveling at 12 meters per second. It tries to make a turn around a bend with a radius of 22 meters. So basically a car is making a turn, a perfect circular turn. So the first part, let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram of this. So this is going to be a side view of the car. Okay, let's give the car some tires. All right, so if it is making, let's say here's the center of the circle. Here's our radius R, 22 meters. And our forces, so we have our normal force from, from the ground. Let's try that one more time. So we have our normal force from the ground. We also have the force due to gravity, so the weight of the object. And the force that's keeping it moving in the circle is the centripetal force. In this case, it's going to be the force that exists between the tires and the road. So our car is moving around in the circle like this. So it's going to be tor pointed towards the inside of the circle. Always, centripetal force is always po pointed towards the center. Force due to friction. And this is our radius. Okay, so let's keep this picture in mind when we get to part B and part C. So part B, we are going to set up Newton's second law equations, F net equals MA, for both dimensions. So meaning the X and Y direction. Well, the car is only accelerating in the X direction. So our sum of our forces in the X direction was force of friction equals mass times acceleration, and it's a centripetal acceleration. Our other equation, some of the forces in the y direction, are going to be equal to ma, but we don't have an acceleration in the y direction, so it's going to equal zero. And those two forces are F normal is up, and force of gravity is down. 
Okay, so those are our, that's our setup. So for part, I guess this is part B slash C. Part C, find the minimum coefficient of friction needed for the car to make it around the bend without slipping. So mu is what we're looking for. Well, we're going to use our two equations we just set up. We know the force of friction equals mass times acceleration centripetal. Right here we know that the normal force is equal to Fg, and Fg is equal to mass times gravity. There's an equation we know for the force of friction. That equation is mu times normal force. And let's go ahead and substitute in our equation for acceleration centripetal, v squared over r. All right, I'll continue it right over here. So if we're looking for mu, let's get mu by itself. Mu equals mv squared over r divided by f normal. Now I want to substitute in what was f normal. Well, here's f normal. So mv squared over r divided by mg. Well, you'll notice that there's a mass here in the numerator and a mass in the denominator, so our masses cancel. And v squared divided by r divided by g is the same thing as v squared over r times g. So when we plug in our givens, we know that the velocity in the problem is given as 22 meters per second. We want to square that and then divide by the radius, which was 22 meters. And let's just go ahead and use gravity as 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, when we go ahead and plug all that into our calculator, we should get a mu of 2.245. It's a huge coefficient of friction. That's what's causing it to keep from slipping.